There we go. Oh, good fish. All right. Get away from there. <laughs> this rod just a little on the light side for that one. Or maybe we're going. I'm not sure which way. Oh, staying down. Try to ease you up current with the motor a little bit. Man, they like that Where clacking is he, wrap. Is he, is he between there? Oh, he's coming. I spooled it up with some heavier line last night. He's swimming right along with us. He probably doesn't even know he's hooked. Okay. Yeah, I don't I think we're going to need a gaff here, that's uh -uh. for sure. Mm. Mercy, what do you got? Well, this little rod makes it real dramatic. Yeah. It's thrown between those pilings there very often. They use those corners, and very often there's a hole swept out under those corners. So if you throw it up into that bit of an eddy between the pilings there, as it sweeps out of the hole there, there'll be fish waiting on that corner to grab whatever kind of gets caught in that current. It's a real easy place to find it. Inter Here we come. Yep. Oh, yeah. A little, little Mr. Baby Goliath. Goliath. Off that piling. Here we go. All right. Thank you, sir. Jeff, wash your hand off before that shows up on camera somewhere. All right. How's he doing? Uh, talk about the... Uh, Hunky dory. So those yeah. goliaths, there are some monsters around some of these pilings. They, uh, like you said, this current, this is the narrowest, they build the bridges on the narrowest part of the river, so you get every time the tide's moving, which it is almost 24 hours a day, it's constantly sweeping sediment away from these pilings, and the result is some big holes these bridges are just a magnet for everything because, again, this is the narrow part of the river. And when this tide's flowing, it's just like a siphon. Everything upstream or downstream has to go through here when the tide comes. So these fish have a, a funnel that everything comes through, and it really cuts down the search area for them. It's All a right. good, good current moving against this bridge right here, Jerry. Yeah, you would think there'd be something either right in front or right on those corners. Wait for that disoriented bait, I guess. Whoa! There's somebody! Whoa, somebody oh home! What's that? I don't know, but he's heavy. I would think it's probably a snook here. It doesn't feel like a tarpon. What a fish. It's got some weight. Yes, it does. Could be one of these little Goliath groupers hanging around. It this could bridge. be a Goliath, I guess. Except he'd be heading for those pilings a little harder. I hope it's not just a black drum. Solid fish. Oh. Yeah, this is a fairly heavy rod here. I was gonna say you got the stick for it. Look at this net, I imagine we're gonna need it. I think so, unless it's a black drum. Can't believe we haven't seen it yet. It kind of makes me think it's some kind of Goliath. Here we got a leader. Whoa. Holy crap! A triple it's tail! A triple tail. Nice! No. Friggin' big one! There's this one too! Holy Oh. Ease, him, ease him over. Yes. <laughs> we had fish. Well, nice yes. one. Oh Man, my god. You don't get a lot of those. Look at Big that fish. Beautiful fish. That's a bridge oh, busting man. triple tail there. Yeah, you only get those around the bridges in this area. That's what you want to oh. see. I, we, my shoulder was well, already sore. Now it's real well, sore. Well, he ate that plug down there too. Yeah, that was the right plug to be using. There. Oh, there we go. Nice. Didn't even get my hand. Deep dive and plug getting down oh, there. Oh man, that the, thing uh, drops like a jig. I fish it just like a, pretty much like a jig around these yep. things. Just it's got a little short, slow. violent vibration. And nice fish. This one's going home with me. Yeah. There's a big swirl in that mullet. Yeah, I, I Come don't know. Eat it, eat it, eat it. Ah. There we go. Whatever was looking at that mullet decided to eat my... <laughs> I'm afraid he's going to get in that live bait. Yeah, I'll get that bait. He hasn't way. already. Well, we got another fish here that doesn't want to come up too bad. Oh! Get you in something? No. Just cut it. Hmm. Cut 40 pound. Big snook, I think, all the way. It's all roughed up. 
This same bridge at night creates an incredible shadow line with this crack between the lanes above us, the uh, street lights create real distinct shadow lines across here at the Snook and Tarpon will line up either right behind or in front of the ambush bait coming through that's temporarily blinded. Whole different world here at night. The fish get a lot braver to start busting the surface. Ah, it's a great place to be on the up current side of a bridge, outgoing tide, little breeze. Yeah, the wind's kind of switched. Uh, when I first got here, that wind was, you know, coming around that point and really sweeping that point. And unfortunately, there's mostly ladyfish going insane over there. But yeah, now we've kind of moved out to this deeper channel to see what we can pick up. There we go. Oh, hey, all right. Well, he's not a monster, but he's a fish. Yeah, I got a little bent rod action there. Yeah, no jumping. No jumping. Still that waiting might, for might your... Might be a little snook, huh? It's kind of a different animal, but there you go. Nice little trout. All right. Pretty not a monster, but... All right, nice fish, Jerry. Nice well, fish, a little soft shrimp on the shadow line. That shadow line becomes the uh, ambush point. These bait come through these uh, brighter lights out here. and Theoretically, they're somewhat blinded when they first hit the uh, shadow line, just like we would be walking into a bright room. And those fish sitting back in the shadows had their eyesight acclimated and just sitting there waiting. All right. Yeah, decent fish, pretty good snook. All right, good fish for the shadow lines. Uh, oh, I need that little crankbait down there. Yeah, yeah that's decent fish. Yeah, it's good on you. Get the crankbait make a little rattle. Day or night, a bridge is a great place to fish. All right, here he goes. <laughs> 